in winter time, like when you shake people's hands, like Russians don't mind shaking hands with people. Like that's just kind of a common thing we do just like in here. But uh, Russians are very obsessed about cleanliness. So for example, um, in the winter time, when you go and shake somebody's hand, even if it's negative 40 outside, which it often is in the winter, they won't shake your hand with your glove, with their gloves on. They will take off their gloves and then shake your hand and then put your, their hands back in the gloves because that's just rude. You don't shake hands with your gloves. Your gloves are dirty. Your gloves have been touching, you know, the dirt, your clothes. So, but your hands are clean. So they'll do that. Um, if your hands are, if their hands are dirty, instead of shaking hands with you, they're like touch your elbow. They'll make you grab like their forearm type of thing. You have to make sure that you're using the proper form of you. There's the polite form and then like the informal form. And so you always should be using polite form where you're talking to people like uh, that you don't know, especially older people. Um, Russians, uh, when you're doing tracting, they have two doors in their apartments. They have a quarter to a half inch thick steel door. And then they have a regular wood door behind it. So when you knock on the door, um, they will open up the wood door, but they won't open up the steel door. And then they'll ask, who is it? And then you have to try and yell through a steel door, you know, who it is, what you're doing. Um, same thing as that Russians don't have houses. They have the apartment, the apartment buildings. In order to get in, they have um, the electronic uh, door codes. So what you have to do is you have to dial in an apartment and you call them. And then you, you're talking through this little, you know, like machine on the door and they have to let you in and then you can go up and, you know, knock on their apartment or other people's apartments. Another cultural thing, Russians, when they talk, they're very close. You get very, very close to each other. They don't have a concept really of personal bubble. So like you will be almost nose to nose to people sometimes when you're talking to them on the street. And that's just fine. Um, that's just how they are. They don't like talking from distances. They will get really up in your face as they talk. Russians don't shake hands through doorways because uh, that's bad luck. Russians are very superstitious people. There's some things that they just you just can't do is taboo. So like you can't whistle in a inside the um, inside an apartment, inside of a building. You shouldn't whistle in general. They would say, but you can't whistle inside of a building because then you'll lose money. Like it's just like a bad luck that you're just gonna lose a bunch of money soon. Um, Russians are very obsessed about drafts. Um, that's called a squaznak. That's actually my favorite word, squaznak. But uh, what it is is that if you get a draft inside the house and they and if you don't close it, like if you're in the house and there's a draft blowing, they will get sick. They'll get a cold, they'll get a flu, and then they're out for a week. Russians are survivors. It doesn't matter how bad life is. They will still get up every morning, get dressed, go to work. They'll make it through their day and they go home no matter it doesn't matter if they're actually not getting, going to get paid for that week at all. It doesn't matter if, you know, they're living in the, you know, the dumpiest place that you can ever find. They will, and they hate their life. They'll still get up every morning and they'll still go and they'll do it. They survive. One thing though about Russians is that once they know you, if they, if they know you and they trust you, they are the nicest people you will ever meet. They will give you anything that they have just because like you asked for it. So like, uh, there's many examples. I know of senior couples who have gone in and you know, they've walked into a, you know, somebody's apartment and they're like, Oh, I really like this. Uh, and they're like, Oh, I like this uh, little vase that you have. And the, they're like, and the Russian will just go up, grab it and give it to them. They're like here, take it then. If you like it, it's yours. And they're like, no, no, it's yours. And they're, and they're, so they'll do that. I've had moments where, you know, I've been offered, um, like, I've been offered really nice things just because I'm like, oh yeah, this is really nice. And I say, like, oh, well taken. I'm like, I can't take that. It's yours. It's like, this is your air. Like, like don't give away family heirlooms because, because they trust you. They like you. You're a friend. So a Russian trust, Russians, when they trust you, it's really strong and it's nigh unbreakable. So that's a really cool and admirable trait that I have of them. And... Russians are actually, so despite the fact that they don't really change much, in some ways they're very creative. Um, if there's something that they need to get and they really want it, they will come up with any scheme possible in order to get it. Um, the Russian language is, um, for a, especially is like this, the Russian language is capable of adapting. And so a Russian um, can make up, for example, can make up an infinite amount of swear words because the, their language is just the way in their mindset that they can just make up words 
for whatever they want right then and there type of thing. And so their language is very beautiful and it's very complex and they can just kind of like take bits and pieces of it, mash it up into something new and call and it, and it works. And so language wise there's that they're very creative and if they need to get something and overall overall they're very good people. They're just you just have to get get to them first. You have to really show them that you care and that you love them and then they will open up and they are the best people that you will ever meet. The Russian economy is primarily driven by oil. Um, they have lots of natural resources that they could be using, but they primarily use oil because that's the easiest thing for them to get and it's the most profitable. So their entire economy is pretty much based on oil and they export. They almost they don't use a lot of it for themselves and so they just export all of it. The ruble has gone down because of, um, of the sanctions put on the Russian um, banks. The Russian banks are, there's private banks, but they're, the main bank is state controlled. Um, and so that bank has been losing tons of money. They've had a very terrible fiscal policy of Putin has been spending, I think it was like 25, 40% of the budget. I think it was on military update, upgrading their military for the military. It's been great, you know, you know, new stuff, new equipment, new toys. Um, but for the populace, it's been terrible because that's cut out tons of social programs that they originally were promised. Um, the older people, cause there's Russia has, um, not been growing they've had they have a they have a negative birth rate so when Mitt Romney said that actually there was tons of Russians were furious that, that Mitt Romney would dare say anything like that um, in Russia there's almost kind of like two trains of thought there's the regular people and then there's the government um, the Russians for the most part especially in the Far East um, it might be more different in Moscow but at least in the Far East and at least the you know the good eastern half of Russia. Um, they don't trust the government at all. Um, they know it's corrupt. It is, um, despite what, you know, Putin and everybody else will say, it is very corrupt. It's an oligarchy. Um, they know they don't really have much of a voice, so, but they can't do anything about it. Um, Russians historically have always been very subjective people. Um, part of their philosophy, and it's actually in their national anthem, is that they don't change the ways of their fathers. So they always do the exact same things all the time. But in terms of Mitt Romney, Russia has always been, uh, especially since Russia has always wanted to prove itself that it's, it always, it, to me, it always felt like it was that kid who was a little bit weird, but it was like, no, I like, I matter. Like I am something that important I can contribute to the class or to society. And, um, but nobody kind of like respects them or they're like, you're just way too weird. Even though you have some great things you can do, you're just weird. So Russia historically has always been trying to prove itself. Um, after World War II, it was very military aggressive for multiple reasons. Uh, one was for power. One primarily was for safety. It didn't want another invasion from the West, which it feared that it was going to happen. Um, and so Russia has always felt like it, especially after World War, especially after World War II, it's always felt like it's been a, it's been, a, if not the number one country in the world, at least number two. And ever since the fall of the Soviet Union, it's had a really big fall from grace. And they realize that. And so it's, they feel like they want to get back up there, especially Putin and the government. And so he's willing to do whatever it takes to put Russia back on greatness. He talks about that all the time. Like Russia is a great country and we're going to put it back and we're going to make the world know that Russia is great. Now, whether that's going to be through economics, military, um, just, you know, corruption, coercion, whatever, he's going to do that. So in some ways, in many ways, I agree with Mitt Romney that Russia for us, at least at the moment, and for at least the European sphere, it's our greatest geopolitical threat. And so that's one, so that's what I would say on that note. So one thing in terms of language, I can tell you this. So um, Russia has a uniform um, dialect. So they don't, they don't have, you know, like, like, unlike, you know, in, here in the States where we have the Southern accents and North, Northeastern and, you know, every, and all those other things. Russian has one accent for everybody. The difference is, is that in the West, so meaning, you know, Moscow, St. Petersburg, they speak very, very slowly and very proper and they pronunciate every little detail type of thing. But in the East where I was, they speak like they've picked up on kind of like the, 
Asian quickness. So they will just prattle on in Russian super, super fast. And they just kind of like, well, especially if they're not careful, they're not careful, they'll just muddle everything together. So that can be really hard, especially in that mission at first, trying to understand what you're talking about because you'll pick out two words, maybe, out of an entire sentence because they're speaking so fast. Each city has their own little, like everywhere, they all have their own little slang terms, uh, little nuances that you pick up on. Pronunciation is very key. You have to get, for language, you always have to make sure you're getting the stress of the word right. Otherwise, it could either mean a different word or not make sense at all to a Russian. So the ABC, so we say ABCs in Russian, it's your ABV. So you have A, our, our English looking A, and that's A, the same, same, same thing. Um, then B, uh, B, so B is a, it's kind of like, I'm going to try to do it for the camera. So it's, it's a little circle that goes up and over. And that's a B. And then R, B is a V sound. It's a V. Uh, and then they have a bunch of other funky characters like there's one that looks like a triangle with legs and that's D It is but it goes um A, B, V, G, D, Y, Y, J, Z, E, O, K, L, N, N, O, P, R, S, T, U, F, H, S, Ch, Sh, Sh, Trodny Znak, O, I, Miyaki Znak E U Ya. It, it's it sounds a lot harder than it actually is, but yeah, that's so that's the Russian alphabet. That's all 33 of them. But interesting thing: two of the letters actually don't have a sound. It's it's in Russian. They're translated to hard sign and soft sign. And so that's the trodny znak and miyaki znak. And so you don't actually say those sounds in the like when they're forming a word, but they will change how each of the other sounds are sounded. So for example, like if you have like if you have a Miyaki knock, which is a soft sound after an L. So a regular L is a L, but with the Miyaki knock, it's L. And so there are very minute differences, but Russians will pick up pick up on it like none other. And so that's one interesting thing about Russians, uh, at least for Americans, if you speak something that's not like more than probably about 85% grammatically correct, they won't understand it at all. You can mix up your sentences any way you want because all you need is just a noun and a verb, but you can put them in two different places and they're completely fine. But unlike in English where we can kind of understand caveman talk, Russians can't. So unless if you get all of your like conjugations right, then they have no clue what you're talking about. So that's hard for the first couple months, but you pick it up and so it's all good. So the city, it's the, the Vlad, the Vladivostokians, I suppose is what you can call them. The citizens there, they call it um, the Russian San Francisco. And it pretty much is in terms of geographic. Um, Rush, the Vladivostok is very, very hilly. like, And not just like small hills, like steep hills, just like in San Fran. So they repainted everything. Otherwise, it used to be just all Soviet gray buildings, like the big, you know, 10-story rectangles. They have a lot of stuff around the seaport. Um, so it's one of their main shipping hubs, so you can always see boats and stuff coming in. You can walk around the little beach. That's always fun. Um, if you go to the top of some of the hills, they have lookout vantages where you can see, you know, a good, like, half of the city, which is really cool. Um, they just built two new bridges, though, um, that span the two bays. So one, uh, one bay is about, I want to say it's about, uh... It's probably about half a mile wide. It's um, it's in it's in the it's in the very middle of the city. It's just, it's this a little bay in the middle of the city, and so uh, they built a bridge over that, brand new, and it, that's great because that cuts out travel from an hour and a half to get around to the other side to about thirty minutes. So that's great. And then they have another one that goes about a mile and a half, and that's it goes over the actual ocean to a big island called Russian Island. Um, not a lot of people live there, but they just put a brand new humongous university there, like a state-of-the-art one. It's, the streets are very narrow. They're very crowded. And so getting anywhere on bus, which is what you have to take because it's, so, it's a very long, very big city, 
Uh, it can take anywhere between 30, 40 minutes. Vlad used to be the Russian naval headquarters for the Pacific. It's since moved to a different city. I don't know what city it's in, but uh, they still have a big Russian naval presence there. So there's always some uh, Russian Navy ships docked there um, every year. Um, they'll have a couple of these really big, huge mass ships, like um, old, you know, like a like wooden ships with like the huge, you know, like 200 foot sails type of thing or whatever, however big they are. Industries there are mainly fishing and shipping. There's a bunch of government work. There's a bunch of like little shops um, that you can go to. There's some cool temples there. They have a they have a Catholic temple there. They have a Catholic church there. They have a couple Russian temples. Each of the different sections of the cities have different fun little um, like attributes about them. The city center where the church is is very busy. It's very packed. Where we, I lived out on in the ghetto part of the city, and that had just a completely different feel to it. Um, there's one part of the city called Balayeva that has the entire hill. So probably about a good, you know, it's probably about a good two mile long hill. It's just full of these ten story apartment buildings, complexes, and you can just see, and they're just stacked one on top of each other. So there's like. 30 of them on um, you're just this one big hill Vlad is a lot like a lot of your other Russian cities uh, They're all each each city will have its own little flair. But they're all kind of like the same thing. They're all really packed They're very narrow. You have to take buses um, It will take a while to get every get everywhere uh, people don't talk on buses very much So that's always a challenge when you're trying to talk to people on the bus, but a really fun city it, a very different city is one called Ulan or day and that's on the other side of Lake Baikal. Um, and it is the Buddhist capital of Russia. They have a couple of Russian temples, but they also have a ton. They have, I think, six or seven big Buddhist temples in the city. And that city is, um, it's kind of like spread out on kind of like a plateau and a hill. Um, and there, everybody there looks Mongolian. Um, but they're technically, their, their race is called Buryatin. So they're ethnic Russians, but they look Mongolian. So you can't call them Mongolians, otherwise they get really offended. It's a completely different type of feel. It's uh, so it kind of has kind of like this, that more kind of like Asian Mongolian type of feel um, to it that Rus um, in Russia. In that city particularly, like the roads are a little bit more like spread out. They're not as narrow, and so like traffic moves a little bit quicker. And they have. A lot of really cool stuff there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. So you can, go, if you can go into the Buddhist temples, those are always really fun to go to. Every Russian city has some type of big, like huge department store. And what's really cool is each Russian city has a big superstore, kind of like our version of like a Walmart or um, or Smiths or Kroger's. They have like a whole bunch of like the itty bitty mom and pop stores and one big superstore, which is where you normally go and get to get your stuff because they have the biggest variety, which is what we like. Um, Russians like consistency, so sometimes those store they don't like going to those stores. But uh, each of those stores are great. They have you can get anything you want there. Well, okay, no, you can't get everything you want, but you can get a lot of. They have a lot of choices, and so you're never really like aching for anything.